There are many types of resistors you can interface with an Arduino. There's the carbon composition resistor, the potentiometer, the photoresistor, and even a joystick module has resistors in it. Resistors are essential part of a circuit. Without them, electronic appliances will be destroyed from too much current flowing through them. So it's necessary to know what they do and how to use them. We can compare a resistor to a water valve in a garden hose. The water valve allows you to have precise control of the water pressure coming out of the hose. A relatively low pressure water is useful when one is trying to water the plants, but a relatively high pressure is needed if you want to remove dirt clinging on your walls or pavement. Being able to control water pressure allows you to use the water hose in a variety of ways. In a circuit, resistors provide resistance to current. This means that they can control how much charge can flow through a specific component. A large resistance would mean that the component will only receive small electrical power. Let's take a look at this simulation of a simple circuit. On the left is a circuit without a resistor, and on the right is a circuit with a resistor. Notice any difference with how bright the bulb is? In the simple circuit without a resistor, the bulb lit up brighter than the bulb with a resistor connected to it. If that's the case, why then would we want to put a resistor on a circuit? As it turns out, components like LED can get burned out or even explode when it is allowed to draw too much current from the power source. Resistors usually dissipate excess electrical energy into heat. This is best observed in appliances such as electric heaters and electric ovens, which uses resistors to convert the current through them into heat that they use to warm the surrounding environment. As it turns out, sometimes dissipating energy can be helpful too. You are probably most familiar with carbon film or carbon composition resistors. These resistors come with long pliable leads on both ends that allows you to stick it through a breadboard. Also, they have different colored bands on their surfaces. And decoding these colors will give you the resistance of the carbon film resistor. Resistance is measured in ohms. One ohm of resistance does very little to control the flow of current, so higher ratings such as kilo ohms is common. Here's a table showing how the markings can be decoded. The first two bands correspond to a specific digit, while the third band correspond to a multiplier. Therefore, a three-band resistor with yellow, violet, red markings has a resistance value of 4,700 ohms, since yellow means 4 and purple means 7, while red means that 47 needs to be multiplied to 100. If we scrape off the coating of a carbon film resistor, we can see that inside, a carbon film is wrapped in a spiral pattern around the ceramic substrate, a form of insulator. Some have more wraps in them than others, which means that they have more resistance. Another type of resistor is a photoresistor, also known as light-dependent resistor. Unlike carbon film resistor, which has a specific resistance value, photoresistors can give variable resistance. Its resistance decreases as lighting increases. Common photoresistor looks like this. Two leads attached to a light-sensitive head. The resistor in the light-sensitive head is arranged in a comb-shaped pattern as this arrangement allows it to absorb as much light energy as possible. A transparent coating protects it from moisture. Once light hits the resistor, it releases extra electrons into the surrounding area where the two LEDs are connected. 
this increases the conductivity of the wire, allowing for more current to pass through it. Since their function depends on the intensity of light falling on them, they are ideal for use as smart night lights and on other light sensing projects. Potentiometer is another type of resistor that can give variable resistance. This is made possible by a knob that can be turned to increase and decrease the resistance offered by the device. A potentiometer has three terminals or pins. You can connect either of the two outer pins to the GND power pin of Arduino. However, since the center pin provides the resistance output, it must be connected to an analog in pin, usually A0. The center pin is connected to a metallic wiper, which comes in contact with a resistive strip inside the potentiometer. By turning the knob left and right, you can vary the position of the wiper relative to the GND pin, shown here as the green pin. The greater the distance between them, the greater the resistance. A rotary potentiometer can usually offer a resistance of up to 10,000 ohms. So at maximum resistance, the distance between the center pin and the GND pin is at the greatest. In modern-day appliances, potentiometers are used in volume control knob of audio devices. But did you know that there are two potentiometers in an analog joystick too? Joysticks have shafts, two of them. One of the shafts allows you to turn the knob up and down, and the other left and right. On each shaft, a potentiometer is connected. If in a rotary potentiometer, a knob is used to bury the position of the wiper, and therefore the device's resistance. Turning the stick of an analog joystick allows you to do this. The, the position of the stick, therefore, provides different resistance value. To summarize, resistors are useful components of a circuit. They allow you to control the amount of current flowing through. Resistors dissipate electrical energy into heat. This is the working principle behind many modern-day appliances, such as electric heaters and ovens. The most common type of resistor is the carbon film resistor. It has colored bands on its coating, which tells us about the value of its fixed resistance. A photoresistor has variable resistance that depends on how much light it detects more light decreases its resistance. A potentiometer is another type of variable resistor. A knob is used to bury its resistance value. It is commonly used as a volume control knob in speakers, but they are also present in analog joysticks.